Hi everyone and welcome to your journey towards a smoke free life and I'm here to give you five transformative tips to help you quit smoking and trust me it's not your typical lecture on why you should stop it's about changing your perspective and the understanding about the deep rooted addiction that you're suffering so let's dive straight in so tip one the first thing is to prepare your mind and what I'm talking about is understanding how the addiction works and how it's created, first of all, when you first ever stop smoking, uh, start smoking, sorry. And what I mean is, is when you first succumb to the addiction, a neuron connection is made up in your brain and it, it, it's, it's then connected. And then that then fires every time the level of nicotine goes down in your body and it fires and you get a craving and you want a cigarette to access, to get nicotine, to get that feed, um, that need, if you like, that's been artificially created in your mind, in your brain. So we've got to come up with strategies and layers to arm you, give yourself a set of tools to combat that craving, to break that link in your brain, to, to dismantle that neuron connection eventually. And that's the plan. Because once you break that neuron connection in your brain, you will never go back to smoking because you've broken it and you will never, it will never fire again. And that's the end result that you're looking for. And that's why you can never, by using this process, it'll help you never go back to smoking. Because we've all been there. We've all tried to stop, gone six months to a year for me anyway. And suddenly I'm going back to smoking. And the reason is I never dealt with the addiction, the, the psychological aspects of the addiction, the, the, how the neuron connections are in the brain. You want to make that dormant and irrelevant so the brain then just literally dismantles it and uses it for something else. So that's the goal that we got. And through this video, we'll go through layers of, of, of strategies of how you can build up a set of tools in your mind to combat the craving. And it's a slow process, it's a, it's a process, not oh, I'll stop and just use the tools, you can't do that, you've got to build this up and slowly over time subconsciously get this information into your subconscious of your mind so you're really well armed to combat the craving when you finally do stop or you go to nicotine replacement therapy or you take patches and anything else because that takes a little longer to satisfy the addiction you're going to still be battling that craving while that's working so you need to be armed, not to go for the instant fix that you get from cigarettes, but just be patient and allow the other methods of getting the nicotine to work into your body. I use chewing gum. But then finally, you, you wean yourself off of that by preparing yourself from there to get overcome the addiction itself. And you want to move away from nicotine addiction full stop. And that's the end result. So that's the process. So if you stick around, then you'll learn a little bit more about how I did it and we can move forward. So let's start with the second tip. And tip two is understanding the chemical makeup of cigarettes. It's really to deeply explore what is in cigarettes. It's not just those scary images on the packs of fags. It's, you've got to understand there's 7,000 toxic chemicals that you're inhaling every time you smoke. It's really important to educate yourself on the damage that causes your body every time. Because we're all told this, but when we smoke, it just means nothing to us. But when you understand that, just label a few of them, you've got formaldehyde, benzene, arsenic. I mean, when you mention these chemicals, in large doses, they'll kill you, kill you stone dead. So when you say you're taking these chemicals in these small doses every time you have a cigarette, but you're powerless to stop it, um, but, and your brain naturally is a thrive and survive organ. It, it, it tries to protect you against dangerous things. So when you think about these 7,000 chemicals, and I would recommend to Google it and, re and really read deeply into these chemicals and visualise how dangerous they are to your body. I'll just give you another scenario. You're eating dinner. You've got your salt and pepper. And imagine someone introduced another set of condiments onto the table, formaldehyde, arsenic, and you've got benzene, and you sprinkle that on your potatoes. You definitely wouldn't, would you? So I'm not doing that. But after you've eaten, you have a cigarette, and you're just straight away inducing these chemicals after you've eaten. So, but you wouldn't have it on your potatoes. 
you've got a craving for food, which is a natural instinct to eat, because you need your energy. So you have your food, but you don't want to have benzene and arsenic with your potatoes, but you'll have it in a cigarette. But you're addicted to cigarette and you get a craving for fags. Seems strange, doesn't it? So when you start to think about it in that scenario, if I don't have it on my food, why am I having it in cigarettes? Why am I accepting to take it through my cigarettes, but I definitely wouldn't have it on my potatoes? So when you look at it that way, you think, yeah, it's crazy, why? And when you start questioning it, that's another preparation level as well. So it's a good way to visualise it because we've been evolved on this planet for hundreds of thousands of years. So our brain's a natural state is, is, is not to have an addiction towards smoking. So I'll just leave it with that and just think about that. It's another layer of... of of consideration when you're smoking and what I suggest to do is think about this every time you have a cigarette after dinner about your cigarettes and every time you want a cigarette question it um, so that's really about understanding the chemicals and it's really important to delve deep into this because um, I know we used to get tired of being told this when we smoked but maybe that was a reaction because we didn't want to believe we didn't want to accept it because we love the addiction it made us feel wonderful so why are you telling me it's all negative when it makes me feel great so these are the things you've got to then re-establish in your mind and this leads us on to the next tip which is embracing your natural brain state so when you consider the thousands of chemicals toxic chemicals you're taking in when you smoke well that's not, a, your natural brain state wouldn't accept that because humans thrived before smoking ever existed. We have to remind ourselves of that, that craving for nicotine is not a natural necessity to survive. And when we think about a natural brain state, we have to think about our senses as well. We have a sense of smell, sense of taste, we see colour and obviously we can hear. But the three senses that really relate to smoking is colour, you see colour, tobacco's brown, it's not a very nice colour. And then you've got the sense of smell, well smoking doesn't smell very nice either. I don't know if you can remember back before you ever started smoking, it was a foul smell. And then your taste. And when you first started smoking, I remember the day I smoked, first smoked, it was an awful taste. And it coughed and made me cough up and my body reacted by coughing up uncontrollably while I smoked but my brother said don't worry that will pass because I was only 13 at the time and it did and then you got used to it so then you accepted it and now the nicotine got to work and numbed all those senses towards smoking actually made it even taste acceptable if you think it's crazy but that's how crazy the addiction is but it's actually not when you break free from it but imagine a natural state when you're out hunter gatherers and everything else and you've got your colour, you've got your smell, you've got your taste and you, you're chasing after, say you see a rotten piece of fruit, you're not going to eat it because A, it doesn't look very nice because you can see the colour discoloration and you can see the difference between a nice ripe piece of fruit to a horrible rotten one. When you smell it, it smells awful so you're definitely going to want to eat it. And, you definitely, and if you do actually taste it, it's going to taste foul. So you're going to throw it away. But we accept the cigarettes. So when we first come across the smell of cigarettes, we'd have those natural reactions. Oh, no thanks, that tastes disgusting. If you burn something, what does the smell and the toxins come off? It's awful, isn't it? You don't want to go near it. You can't choke. You, it's awful. So this is your natural state, your natural brain state will have this severe reaction to say leave it alone because it's protecting you, it's got this natural thrive and survive and it's got the senses to protect you against bad stuff but we force ourselves to accept the bad stuff, smoking because of the addiction then it numbs those senses to prevent us from having that um, um, negative reaction to what you're taking in because you're addicted and this is the power of addiction, it's actually making you take something, it's actually going to kill, it's going to cause harm to you. So when you start to realise that in your natural state you would never touch that with a barge pole but you can't because you're addicted so you are accepting it and then you start to then reaffirm your natural brain state and want to bring it back to that state.
and thinking about all that and how we existed before cigarettes, then we can then imagine a life without cigarettes because we think, well, if we go back to our natural state, I won't need them anyway because my brain's so wonderful, it can deal with all these issues that I, for the reason I smoke now. So why am I smoking? And you can eliminate it that way. So understanding your brain's natural state and even thinking about how we used to deal with stressful situations before smoking ever existed or was ever invented. And we were around for hundreds of thousands of years, so we didn't need it then, and we survived and thrived, so we don't need it now. Well, we have to teach ourselves that. I know it sounds crazy, but when you're addicted to something, you have to consider, think about all that. But it's one powerful way to shift your mind away from needing cigarettes and it's the end of the world because you haven't got one to, well, I've just got an addiction I need to deal with. And that's the way you can deal with that and you're building up these layers. So that's tip number three. And these are crazy tips, but it's important tips to consider on your journey to stop smoking. And I wouldn't say stop straight away because this is not going to make you stop straight away. What it will do is help prepare your mind for when you actually do finally stop and you've got that strength to say, I don't need cigarettes anymore. I can deal with the cravings. I can put up the cravings because I know they'll just pass. So that's tip number three. So before we go on to the next tip, just let you know I've written a book on all this in more detail. So that will be in the description below. So if you want a written version of what I'm discussing now, and it's a permanent guide for you to go through, then that's on Amazon on Kindle. So I'll definitely give that a look. And I hope it will really help you. And I hope this video has given you some value so far. But we'll get on to the next tip now. So now we move on to tip number four which is recognising triggers. It's understanding the points when you actually want a cigarette, the, the, the points where you reach for that cigarette, and there's so many different reasons. And the main reason, a lot of people, is stress. And they reach for that cigarette to grab for that comfort because they want to relieve the stress that they're suffering because they're feeling anxious and everything else. But in truth, yes, it makes you feel calm. I remember it used to make me feel calm and it gives you that sense of comfort. But all it's doing is satisfying your addiction and that's it, it's doing nothing else. It's actually making your stress worse because it increases your heart rate and your blood pressure. Um, but the power of the comfort feeling from, this, from, the, from the addiction masks all that. And it actually stops your brain from dealing with stress in a more natural way as well. Because again, if we keep going back to our existence before cigarettes, we dealt with stress so much better. And we've evolved over hundreds of thousands of years. And there's natural stress mechanisms that the brain has to deal with stress. The chemicals it releases naturally will actually deal with stress a hell of a lot better. Because it did. You know, when you imagine a hunter gatherer getting chased by some predator and it wants to eat you alive, then that's a little bit more stressful than other situations you might find yourself in today. So they didn't reach for a packet of fags because they're a little bit stressed because some predator wants to eat them alive. Their brain dealt with stress a lot easier. So I'm just saying that we have to think about it because when we, when we suffer in the craving and the addiction, then we need to reach for that comfort because we're stressed. And if we don't have that comfort, it literally makes you feel awful and, and really anxious and a lot worse because you haven't satisfied the addiction. And it just doesn't go away. And I remember that because I was very stressed one day working. And I had one cigarette after another, but it just didn't, it, it was so stressful that it didn't satisfy, it, it, it didn't make me feel comfort, comfort, it didn't bring the stress down. But even if you didn't have a cigarette, you'd feel even worse. So that's how powerful this addiction is and how it controls you. So stress, you've got to think when you have a cigarette because you're stressed and you will, you just got to tell yourself, this is not helping my stress. I'm just satisfying the addiction because it's created a trigger of anxiety that then triggers the need for a cigarette. That's all it's doing, nothing more. It's actually making my stress worse, be hurt by raising my heart rate and blood pressure. So I know this is not helping my stress. I would be able to deal with stress a lot easier without cigarettes, but at the moment I'm addicted, so I'm, I'm in control of the cigarettes. And when you look at it this way, it starts to build that into your mind. And if someone said to you, 
controlling you wouldn't like it, would you? If someone controlled every aspect of your life, you want to break free of it, wouldn't you? You wouldn't want them to control every, every aspect of your life. So why are you accepting it through the addiction? And that's what I was trying to think about for myself. So that's the stress. And then you, after eating, again, we covered that with the food, and you, you, it's a trigger point. You have, you have your dinner, and the next thing you want is a cigarette. You think, so why am I destroying the nice dinner I had by taking in 7,000 chemicals of horrible taste? But it's an addiction, it's a trigger point. And is it helping your dinner nourish your food? No, it makes it worse. It affects every part of your body, so it's not helping you at all. So it's no benefit to after smoking. You know, smoking after dinner is no, no, no benefit at all. And then you're bored. Well, you, you, you do, it, it's just the addiction. It's just a habitual then. It's just this craving popping into your mind that you want one. It, the brain suddenly says, nicotine's draining from your body. I want some more nicotine. That's it. It's not boredom or anything else. You just need one because you're just running out of nicotine that you're just inducing to your body. And you're taking in 7,000 chemicals just to satisfy the addiction. So this is understanding your triggers and to eliminate and break those links, you know, severing them, severing those um, associations, if you like, like when you go out for a drink. It's an association, it's a reminder. So when you do that, you usually have that. So it's about breaking that, that association between one thing and another, where you can have that, and I don't need that. You can enjoy that a lot more you're out for a drink, your friends, you'll taste that nice wine that you had a lot better without taking in those chemicals. You remember, smoking suppresses your taste buds and your smell, so you're not tasting the beer like you would before, and you're not tasting a nice glass of wine because they're suppressed. You'll taste that wine a hell of a lot more and the food on your plate. So just remember all that as well. You've got to keep telling yourself all this because when you finally stop, all those senses come flooding back to full strength, and then you'll start to taste things a lot different. So that's understanding triggers. So tip five is preparing the process for quitting, and this is probably a lot further down the road than right now, so it's not like you're gonna do it now, but it's something to consider um, and preparing your mind ready for quitting. What I mean is, is, is meditation is a really good way to do this. And if you never meditate, it doesn't matter. All you need to do is just sit down in a quiet place for about 10 minutes, close your eyes, and just really start to breathe nice and relaxed. And when you start to think about, and have some nice gentle music, get some meditation music, you can get a um, free app like Mind Valley that can give you free meditation programs on there. But it's allowed just to centre your body and really just sit there and relax and just allow your brain to focus onto what you really want to visualise. And it's about visualising yourself in the future not smoking and enjoying a life without the need for cigarettes. Even in a normal situation where you might be having stressful situations or anything else, visualise it without the need to have a cigarette. But do this every day because you want to put yourself and and open up your subconscious, and that's what meditation helps do, is open up your subconscious mind and allow that information to go pouring in. And by repeatedly doing it, you then start to physically know that you're going to stop and have that version of yourself come true. And then you can um, then see, see yourself thinking about situations for which you needed a cigarette before, but then repeat that situation in your mind and not having to have a cigarette, and visualise that. But it takes time and practice. But with all the other things we've talked about, um, with all the other things laid on, every time you smoke, you think about it's not helping your stress, the chemicals you're taking, and all those things were repeated all the time. So it's about repetitiveness every time to re-educate your mind and your brain. And by doing this and visualising your future self, not smoking and free of the addiction, will be another powerful layer that allows you to, when you finally quit, and have that power to withstand the cravings, you know, the cravings that you have. And then you can consider nicotine replacement therapy. 
but I would consult your doctor regarding what's the best for you. But my one was chewing gum. And when I finally got to the point I was ready to walk away from cigarettes, and we know that nicotine, nicotine replacement, uh, vaping exists now, I've never vaped because it didn't exist when I stopped. But it takes a slower, it takes a little bit longer to get that hit. So with smoking, you get that instant satisfaction. With, with nicotine replacement, chewing gum patches, it takes longer. And so you don't get an initial hit. And probably the other chemicals in cigarettes are maybe addictive as well, I'm not sure. But um, you just don't get that instantaneous hit. So you had to wait a little while before your craving disappeared. And I chose uh, 400 milligrams of nicotine chewing gum, first of all, for about three months. And then I just went down to two and just allowed myself to so say, I know this is not going to give me the hit straight away, but it's only satisfying my addiction. And all I need is the nicotine because why am I taking in 7,000 chemicals just to get the nicotine to satisfy my addiction? So I'll just wait a little bit longer for the hit from the nicotine from the chewing gum instead. And that's how I looked at it. And just had that bit more patience. And it did the hit, it dealt with it, and yeah, the cravings just disappeared. And it liberated me as well because I used to road, ride a motorbike and I could have a chewing gum in my mouth and not need to stop for a cigarette. So, but it's about a process. So you don't want to stay addicted to nicotine as well because you need to, you're only one step away from going back for, to smoking because you haven't dealt with the addiction. But you can then gradually bring that down into two and then nothing. And then you still have the cravings because you're still addicted to the nicotine, but you've built up such a preparation in your mind that now you can deal with your cravings saying, this will pass, it's only an addiction, I don't want to have 7,000 chemicals induced into my body. I don't want to be addicted to nicotine. I can overcome this. This will pass. And before you know it, what happened to me, that connection in the brain, that neuron connection broke. And I never want to go back. And now I'm free of smoking for 17 years and never need to go back. I feel, I see cigarettes as a, as a stick of poison and have no need. I can be around cigarettes and not have any inclination to, oh yeah, I fancy a cigarette. No way. So this is the way I stopped and it permanently stopped. It brought my brain back to its natural state. And another thing, a just quick one, I deal with stress a hell of a lot better than I ever did when I smoked. Smoking made my stress, and it was always stress. But I face the same stressful situations today, similar ones, you know, you still get stressed. But my brain deals with it in so much better condition, it just dis dissipates. Once you, you initially get your stress and everything else and you deal with the issue that you're stressed with, boom, just disappears, gone. And you're not stressed anymore. You're far better equipped naturally to deal with stress. So don't be afraid to stop because you might get stressed. Just believe that your brain will deal with stress a hell of a lot better without smoking. But in order to be in that state, you have to prepare your mind. And that's what this video is all about. So I've also released a book online, so it's, it's, called, it's called Breaking Free, Quit 